As I always say, this is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> so we're going to give you three different years in the past, and we want you to give us like an important memory from each of them. So first one is 2005. All right, 2005, I was in my second year of law school. Um, it is the year where I take my first internship in the music industry, but more importantly than music-wise, it was the year I decided that I wasn't going to go to a law firm. I had like gone through, I want to say like a gazillion on-campus interviews and flown up to New York a thousand times doing doing those like doing the callbacks and I went to my acceptance dinner and I remember like sitting there and it was like at a very reputable firm I was going to get paid everything my parents wanted me to get paid to pay down my loans for the summer and I like sat at this dinner and watched the junior associates which is what I was going to be in two years like sitting through this dinner looking miserable and like they had not seen sunlight in a year and a half and they like sat through this dinner and then went back to the office when it was done and I got on the train. My parents live in Connecticut, and I was in Manhattan. So I got on Metro North and went home to see them for the night because it was a Friday, so I had the weekend. And I walked on the house, and I was like, I'm not doing it. And my parents were like, you're not doing what? And I was like, you're, I'm not doing it. I'm not. I will not go work at a firm. And they were like, so let's rewind and discuss the amount of school that we've paid for. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, the amount of school that you paid for has put me in school for 25 years. I don't want to do this after 25 years of school. And so my mom was kind of like, I always told you that I want you to have a career, not a job. You're right. Go figure out what you want to do. And I was like, I want to go to business school. And they were like, false. You're getting a job. And so I, like, thought I had them. I was like, yeah, fine. I want to do entertainment law. But, like, you need a connection for that. And you don't have one. So I'm going to go fill out my, my FUQA application now. And they were like, false, we do sit down. And I was in New York on this guy Jerry's couch the next day taking an interview. But like it was 2005 was definitely the year that I decided that like the very conventional path that I was supposed to be taking, I wasn't going to take. So I'd say that would be it for 2005. So continuing the next year, 2010. 2010 is Justin Bieber's first headlining tour. So I feel like that gets it. I want to say it was June. He had done his first solo show February of that year. I think we did it on Valentine's Day at the Palladium. So his first solo headlining show was the Palladium. And then we literally, he opened for Taylor Swift in two markets, actually the fall before in, in 2009. And then his first headlining tour was was the spring or summer of 2010. Um, and I like remember standing on like the floor at the Excel Center in Hartford and like it was figure it's Connecticut, so it was home for both me and Scooter. And so our parents were there and like, our parents are so proud. And I remember like looking at Scooter and him looking at me and us both being like, how did this just happen? You know, like it was just this like moment where like we it was the first moment I feel like we stopped in like the course of Justin growing to like look around a room and realize what we'd done. Um, and so that I feel like gets the 2010 for sure. I, I want to ask something real quick. Mm -hmm. So now I'm making the connection between 2005 and 10. Yeah. You, you kind of like pick your own path in 2005, which kind of like freaked out your parents for a bit, but you ultimately chose your passion. So when looking back, do you see that as like you took like a big risk there or like what's like the main thing that led you to go for your passion? I don't know if like that, that decision definitely tips things in a certain direction for me but in all honesty like that that job had a shelf life like being a lawyer at a record label at a certain point I was going to have to go be a lawyer at a law firm even if I was a lawyer at a record label for a certain period of time even to come back and become a label lawyer again like I was gonna have to go learn the artist side so like that was kind of like a pause as opposed to like a stop um and then I like very randomly fall into management from there like it uh, the the short, short version of the story is that I had a friend at Duke, went to Emory, met Asher Roth, introduced me to Asher. And like in the due course of time, Asher asked me to be his manager. Two days later, his mom does or asked me to be his lawyer. Two days later, his mom does a tarot card reading that says I'm supposed to manage him. And he asks me to do that. And I was like, no, never. I will never be a manager. And my parents were like, you hate your job. Try it. And so I think that is the point. Like, that's where I make the leap. But like. So I kind of like put a pause still like but wasn't really ready to make a jump and then kind of get pushed, I guess, is Got the it. best way to describe it. And then continuing, um, how about 2015? 2015, 
Um, again, Justin, I tried to look for an RA one, but sorry, RA you released in 2014 and 16. So you, you kind of screwed me there. I can't give you one. Um, but 2015 gets Justin because it, it's the comeback. It's, it's what do you mean and where are you now? It was like, I remember, you know, executives telling Scooter and I to stop talking to them about Justin Bieber, that he'd ruined it, that it was over, that the belief cycle had killed it. And like, we just knew it wasn't done and that he wasn't done. Um, and so it was, he was better for a considerable period of time before we let him put music out. We he had to show us that he was sober and together for six months. Um, and, and the original plan was to do it at the roast and the music wasn't ready. And so we kind of sat on it. But like that, that's the year where he kind of like showed the world, like, not only am I back, but I'm an adult and I am back and cemented a career for himself, which, you know, for us, it's like, you know, for, from my perspective, he is a once in a generation artist. And so when things went off the rails, it was scary to see because I knew there was so much more he had left to do. And so 2015 was the year that like we got validated, that it was like we were right to like, <laughs> To, to grind through it like he's family to me so no matter what even if I thought it was over I still would have been there but like it was good to like be able to like look everyone in the face and be like you shouldn't have given up either and now like look at him um so 2015 his comeback definitely gets it for me and going off of that I, I'm just curious when your artists have these important milestones in their careers is that more of a relief for you or is it more like a pressure for the future um I think that every artist is different. The thing that we tell artists when we sign them is that we, you will have no what ifs. I can't guarantee what's going to happen. I don't know if people are going to respond to what you're making. It's your art. I'm not going to push you in a direction to make it that's inauthentic to you because then what's the point? Um, and so I think when, when they have those major moments, it feels like everything clicked. But I don't feel like it creates pressure because I, I'm not going to take something on unless I know I can give it the best shot it could possibly have. Um, and, and I also am cognizant, even in my own career, how much of it is luck um, and being in the right place at the right time. So just because it doesn't work at a certain minute doesn't mean it's not going to work in a little bit. So it's also about like the perseverance of it. So I don't really get disheartened or feel pressure when it works or it doesn't work. It's just more like a, if it doesn't work, you have to pivot. So based off of your experience, are you someone that usually stays in the present or are you more forward thinking? Which one have you found more uh... I have worked hard to have the presence when it is important. Like, I very much am thinking of the next step, but that's because, like, that's the job. But I, I like, definitely, I was, we were at Barclays um, for, Ari did, like, two, she had two sold-out shows in Brooklyn and two in, at MSG, and I turned to Scooter and Barclays, and I was like, did you ever stop and, like, do a look around and, like, recognize it? And he was like, no, and I was like, I feel like we need to go on the floor and do it. It's like, because it gets easy to start blowing through it, but, like, it, each one of those moments is special. I say to artists all the time, every time, like if you called any one of them the day of their first release, I always tell them, like, take a minute and enjoy it. It will never feel like this again. It is never the first time again. It will feel like a routine even the next time you go to do this. So, like, enjoy it right now. Like, make sure you take stock of this moment. And I think the fact that I can recognize those moments for them and point them out to them makes me more aware of them, too. And if you could give one advice to your younger self who's just starting to get into the business, what would you say? Um, I would probably encourage myself, and it's something that thankfully I did anyway, but like definitely had to force myself to do. Like I got here so unconventionally, and I feel like so much of it has just been like following opportunities as they come. And I don't think this was something just to my younger self, but I think it's true for anyone doing anything. that No matter what you're doing, no matter how mindless it seems or stupid it seems or like beneath you it seems like do it to the best of your ability because you don't know what the next thing is going to be that you do and you don't know who's going to see you doing that thing and if you're giving it your all it's going to get recognized like when I was an intern I feel like I was doing stupid licensing spreadsheets like I almost had a law degree like I shouldn't have been doing this but like I was the last one in the office I wasn't it, I did not go home until it was finished and like that's what eventually leads to me getting a job so it's it's one of those things that like don't ever focus on what the task is, but more that you're doing it for you. So if you're going to spend your time doing it, do it the best that you can. And um, if you could play one song out of your phone right now, what song would it be and why? Um, one phone off my song right now, what would it be and why? Um, probably the Bad Guy remix that came out yesterday because it's been <laughs> sitting on my phone only for me. 
for months. And so I'm so like, I feel like I've had it on repeat. My husband's like, you've had this on repeat in the house for months. And I'm like, I'm aware, but now it can be on the radio. So I'm super stoked that other people can listen to it. So I feel like that would be it. And going off of that, like, uh, how do you make the balance between family and work, especially now that you do have your own family? My husband is a stay-at-home dad, so he gets 97% of the credit because it is the hardest job of all time. Um, but I think that it's been, I think once I realized that the only way to, like, have the, the cliche of it all is to change what your version of it all means. And so, like, I stopped worrying about, like, if I'm not home, if my kids are alive and they are fed and they are happy, I don't care what happens anymore. Like, he's not going to do anything the way that I want it done. My nanny is not going to do anything the way I want it done. And that's totally fine. My kids are happy. They're thriving. They're doing great. Like, it's about making the most of the time that I have wherever I am. So if I'm at work, I'm doing my job. I'm not going to sit on Face. Like, if something happens with my kids, obviously, I'm going to get on FaceTime. But, like, I'm not going to sit on FaceTime all day long. I'm not going to, like, F around on my computer and play on Facebook. If I'm at work, I'm going to get my work done so that when I'm at home, I can be singularly focused on my kids. And when they go to sleep, I can be focused on my marriage. It's just about, like, giving 100% to wherever I am. And what's the final message that I would like to give, especially to the recent graduates that are kind of feeling lost in life right now, overwhelmed by all the options. Don't get stuck in an idea of what you think it's supposed to be. Like if something feel like you're not, I know that like as a student, I remember, figure I was a student, I feel like longer than anyone. So like I remember, well, you feel like that first decision or that second decision you make after you graduate or like in, as it relates to a summer defines the rest of your life. Nothing defines the rest of your life. Do what's making you happy right now. Maybe that leads you to the next thing that you want to do. But just make sure you're doing something productive. Like, you you don't – it's a mistake that I've made over and over again professionally in my personal life. Like, I can equate it to buying your first house. Don't buy your first house for the schools for the school district. You don't have kids yet. Just buy your first house because it's where you want to live and it makes sense for your life right now. And then worry what happens five years from now, five years from now. Like, especially as a recent graduate, there's – yes, there's going to be a point where you're, there's going to be this inflection point – and you have to make a decision for the rest of your life. But that point doesn't come at 21 for most people. So, like, do what, take a job that makes you happy, that you are interested in, that you feel like it's something that you can grow in. And if it turns out to not be the right thing, cut and run and try something else on. Like, this is the time in your life that you have to do that where you don't have the outside responsibilities. Like, even your student loans can be deferred for right now. So, like, just try, try the things that make you happy because ultimately that's going to be what you find to be fulfilling down the line.